And we are live. Welcome in to another edition of the DNVR Draft, a fun little simulation we're doing here where we bring in all five of us, of course, Zach Stevens, Andre Simone, Andrew Mason, and Henry Chisholm, uh, the, the, the DNVR Broncos guys, and then the DNVR Draft guys. We're getting all five of us together to mock our way to pick 15, trying to go through some different scenarios here. Uh, last time, of course, we ended up with an interesting scenario in which the Broncos were left with Becton on the board, but Mace didn't want to go that direction, much to the dismay of Andre and Henry, and went with Denzel Mim. So we're mixing up the order this time. We're going to go again and uh, switch up the order. And this time, Mace, who had the 15th pick last time, gets the first pick. So, Mace, you're on the board. Yep. The last shall be first. Shall the first be last? We'll see. But it's an easy pick. Bengals need a quarterback. Looks like things are progressing nicely toward uh, getting Joe Burrow. Reports are even start talking about a contract. Joe Burrow's the guy number one overall. Yep, good pick, good pick, easy pick. And uh, with the number two overall pick in the draft, this one is also a very easy pick, very straightforward. They're going with Tua Tungavailoa with the number two overall pick. Come on, just like May said with the Bengals, the Redskins need a quarterback. Don't fool yourself with Dwayne Haskins, and they get a great quarterback. And Tua, injury concerns? Come on, don't worry about that. He's a great quarterback. Wow, I had my mouse just hovering over you pressing <laughs> Chase Young, and I just and I just clicked it. So now I messed up my board. Uh, I'm sorry for that, but easy pick. Yeah, join the club. I did the same thing. Uh, <laughs> wow, wow, that's uh, that's gonna shake things up for sure. Now I get the really easy pick though, because with the Lions uh, at three. I don't have to debate Isaiah Simmons, Okuda, or even Derek Brown, who might be a dark horse pick there. It's Chase Young all day, every day. Easy breezy. Right. Yeah. Well, now you put me in a tough spot with these Giants because I thought I was going to take whoever you left. But since you're <laughs> taking Chase Young, I actually have a decision to make here. And uh, you know what? We're going to go with uh, Isaiah Simmons here. Nice. Going to the Giants at number four. Wow, this is interesting because the Dolphins have been spending their entire last year preparing to bring in Tua, and now he's off the board. But I think they still need a quarterback, so I think they go here and select Justin Herbert. And the interesting thing about this is this kind of messes up potentially the next pick, which Mace has in the Chargers. I mean, I they I thought they were personally going to go quarterback. Now that second guy's or that third guy's not there. Yeah, and in the real world, they're probably thinking about maybe a, a trade down here. Yeah. However, even though it's not a position of great need, you simply say, okay, who's the best player available? And cornerback is not a need for the Chargers, but Jeff Akuda sitting there at the sixth overall pick. Yeah. That's who I'm taking. Wow, that's <laughs> responsible drafting by the Chargers. Wow, Chris <laughs> Harris and now him. That is, that's incredible. That yeah. is a defense. Now that's a defense. It was looking to be one of the best in the league. Akuda, if he pans out, that is a scary defense. Yeah. yeah. That draft, that war room's probably talking about, okay, like, we can actually put together a secondary that can compete with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I, being the Panthers coming up at number seven, I'm a little disappointed to see him go off the board. I didn't think he was going to fall to me, but, man, just one spot away, just missed out. But you know what? I'm happy with this next guy. I believe it was the same pick that we had in the last draft, but Derek Brown falls right into my lap at seven. I think he would have been great, uh, a great pick in the top three potentially he falls to seven easy give me Derek brown to disrupt that defensive line yeah and now things get real tricky for me um where where the eighth pick for the the cardinals is really intriguing is what happens at four with the giants is going to dictate a lot of what what they're going to do because i'm more and more convinced of what mace told us on the draft pod just what two months ago that we're all talking offense for the Cardinals, but really what they need to do is add more defense where it's Chandler Jones and nothing else there. And they'd really like Derek Brown, but Zach and those Panthers 
picked him up. And, you know, the Giants don't pick up an offensive tackle. Had they done that, I would have had Simmons or Okuda or even Derek Brown drop to me. But now I'm staring at an offensive tackle, which I don't need. I'd be very intrigued to move down with the Broncos, but I need at least a second rounder. We're going to stay put and take Javon Kinlaw because there's a lot of upside to gamble on there. Mm, the mm. Broncos were, were re- they were ready for your call. They were sitting by the phone. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got right. the Jaguars now. And uh, this is another weird one for them. Uh, I, I could see them going receiver for sure. I think that they could be tempted by any of these guys. Um, but at the same time, when you have Leonard Fournette, I really do think they want to build in the trenches. I think that's what was missing when they tried to build around that defense in the past. They didn't quite get that running game up to what it needed to be. I think that they're going to go with Jedrick Wills here. Uh, and I, I think the reason is that you might be able to switch him to right tackle or left tackle, depending on what happens with Cam Robinson. Man, I can't believe Wills has the first tackle off the board. But yeah, I could, I pretty cool. Yeah. All right, that leaves me with the Browns here. Uh, and they're happy because their top tackle is still on the board. They take Andrew Thomas. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. I thought that was going to be worse. Uh, I mean, it could have been. Well, the Jets at number 11, uh, they're ecstatic if this is how it's looking because they can go offensive tackle. They can go for any of the three receivers. And, boy, tough, tough choice. But Jerry Judy is a wide receiver one who fits perfectly. The New York Jets number 11 overall, Jerry Judy, wide receiver, University of Alabama. And while it started off so great for the Broncos, now they're starting to sweat a little bit. Yep. And boy, once that once that J came out of the Jets' mouth that it was Jerry Judy, the Oakland Raiders already had their card turned in. Easy, easy, easy. This is a classic Oakland Raiders pick right now. Give me the fastest guy on the board, and that is Henry Ruggs. Easy. John Gruden gets his speed. Mm. Uh, yeah, tough, uh, tough moment for the Broncos, who are still going to get their pick of a uh, great offensive tackle here because the 49ers do not need an offensive tackle. This is another spot where I would trade down with Denver <laughs> if my main target, C.D. Lamb, wasn't there. C.D. Lamb to the 49ers in that offense should be rendered illegal because you can't have <laughs> that tight end Debo, that running game, that coaching staff, and give them C.D. Lamb. That is unfair, fellas, but you let it happen, so I'll take advantage. Real quick, Andre, is is C.D. your favorite receiver in this draft? Yes, yes, he is. Is it even close? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a slim margin between Judy and Lamb. I think Lamb has higher upside. Judy is more NFL-ready. Judy has... Um, a, a bit of a case of the drops and not as many spectacular catches as I'd like. That's where Lamb really excels. While Lamb is raw or less refined as a route runner, Judy is super refined, uh, maybe the most refined route runner I've ever studied. So they're really kind of polar opposites. So you're really splitting hairs. It's, it's the eye of the beholder. As I tell Hank on the draft pod, when we're in a tie, uh, I give the, the, the win goes to the higher upside and Lamb has the higher upside in my mind. Love it. Love it. All right. Uh, next up is the Bucks at pick 14. They're going to go with Tristan Wirfs, which uh, oh, no. was not the plan at all. <laughs> was not the plan <laughs> at all. But, but, but at the same time, when you look at it, what do they need if they're, if they're going for a tackle? The tackle that they need to get is one that's ready to go day one. They're, they're all bought in now. I was going to try to go receiver here, and I, I considered Justin Jefferson because he is more of that route runner type, really wanted a Judy. Um, I thought that a third receiver could be a bit of a hot take there because uh, they already have the two, but they have a whole third. You got to protect Tom Brady, though, if you're bought in and there's one guy on the board, maybe in this draft, who can step in day one and just do that. Well, if there's any uh, draft people out there that want to join these mocks, Henry's been fired. (laughs) (laughs) So we need someone to fill that fifth slot uh, where you're accepting applications. (laughs) Um, All right. Well, 
This is tough. Um, In and retrospect, you really would have taken that trade with the cards there, huh? I was. I would have taken. You could have given me any trade. I was taking it. <laughs> Who would um, you, have, oh, oh, oh. you have taken at eight there with your pick of wide receivers? And I guess every every tackle was still available. Yep. Every yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would have taken Judy. Judy. Yeah. I would have traded up and snagged Judy. Um, all right. Well. I actually, ever since the conversation was, uh, on Tuesday, I've come around a little bit more on this guy. Uh, I trust Andre. I opened my mind a little bit, watched a little more. I read the, uh, the scouting report on the draft guide, which everyone should absolutely check out. So I think the Broncos actually end up being pretty happy here to select um, Kai Becton with the 15th pick. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and according to Andre's draft guide, I mean, the Broncos just got the ninth best player in the draft, got a top 10 player at 15 at a position of need. We're not talking that they reach for a safety or, or a corner or something here. I mean, got a top 10 player at a position of need. Got a player who's going to probably have a, a significant transition. And you're gambling on upside with Becton. I'm still concerned about the size. And my preference, honestly, is to get a tackle that's a little more ready to plug and play now than somebody who's uh, raw and uh, needs a little more refinement than, say, Jedrick Wills or Worfs or Andrew Thomas, of course. They're off the board, so it's the choice the Broncos have. But, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I know, Dre, you love him. If the Broncos get Becton, I'm not going to be happy. I'll just say this. Munchak with a guy like Alejandro Villanueva, who's 6'9", 320, so big boy, can't move, you know, super seamlessly, isn't going to fit in any scheme, did a really nice job with that Steelers offense. So I think we have seen tackles that are outliers size-wise work out um, for this uh, offensive line. Can we get 44 pounds off Becton then to get him in the Villanueva range? <laughs> I think you could get 20 that's, off of him. That's, uh, I, I just, I can't get past asking a 360 plus pound player to play every down that just that screams red flags to me but he did do it in college in a high, in a high three starts offense. yep in the acc under blistering heat <laughs> <laughs> well he's in louisville humidity. louisville is our might be our most our northernmost southern city it's practically <laughs> indianapolis you know, it's funny because I looked at this and I thought, oh, I was going to say something like, well, I'd probably trade down in this scenario. I, I actually wouldn't. Um, I think that would be the actual move, even with the, you know, the parameters that we've set here. Obviously, we can't trade out of the mock that we're doing um, and just have no pick at all. But I don't think I would trade back here because to me, well, and again, it would depend on how the Broncos see back to it. Um, but if they're closer to where Andre is, you're looking at that's the last player that you would consider to have elite upside i think uh in on the board out there so yeah you could stock up a little bit but you know you're looking at the guys left on the board here it's mckinney and delpit and jefferson and gladney and fulton and even you know cj henderson who i'm not the biggest fan of so right. i don't think there's really any more elite upside guys on the board when you pick there i think you still make that pick with all the confidence in the world in mike munchak yeah. If if you were to try to trade down there, who would you be targeting? Are you targeting that twenty third pick, maybe? Like, where are you trying to get to, and who do you think could move up? I guess it just depends on who you want and where you think they'll be. And again, like I look at this, I mean, maybe you're saying, okay, we're gonna, we want Mims now, and so you're moving back really as far as you can, probably. Um, so that would be an option. Maybe it's Jefferson. Again, you move into the 20s, but you are you don't feel thrilled about that. Now, you might be thrilled with the second round pick you got in and who's there at that time. And that's kind of what happened with the Broncos, I think, this last season is, okay, right. well, they liked Noah Fant. I don't know if they were head over heels in love with Noah Fant, but they knew, okay, well, we like a lot of guys who we think are going to be there in the early second round. And obviously they were able to, you know, have a coup in getting Dalton Reiser and Drew Locke. So, for me, I, I'm always, I want to get an elite player in the first round. So at least with Becton, you feel, okay, we got elite upside here. Now, if you do trade down, say, 10, 11 picks and pick up a round two pick, does cornerback come into play? Does a Jeff Gladney out TCU perhaps become somebody you think about in the mid-20s? 
I guess. I just, it's a steep drop off for, for me right after this pick. I remain convinced that in, in this defense, in this scheme, with the type of cap they've already invested, they don't need to invest another premium asset to again add to the secondary. But maybe I'm off. But at the same time, you got Callahan coming off the books uh, after this year. Elsewhere in the secondary, Kareem Jackson is basically year to year at this point. Yeah. So while you and he would play right away, he'd easily be one of your top three cornerbacks. So he's going to if you draft a corner in round one, he's going to basically be a starter, even mm-hmm. if he's not technically a starter, kind of like Bradley Rope. It just feels like a luxury that you don't have right now. You still have glaring, glaring holes on your on your team, and that's not a glaring hole. Yeah, I it's, it's not a glaring hole, but right now, uh, your you're cornerback, you're looking at A.J. Boye, and then you go Bryce Callahan, who's coming off the foot injury, who knows what else, and then Devontae Bosby, because you're number three right now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, and again... You know, one thing I think that we should mention, which we talked about on the draft today, is someone's going to do something stupid. And so it's probably not going to fall like this. All of these picks are very uh, sound, logical picks that we made. Someone's going to do something stupid in the top 15, which will open up one more player, uh, you know, likely. And, and and like we said on the, on the podcast, one of us isn't going to be the one to do that because if we do, it just makes us look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I mean, how, how about this? In this draft specifically, the Chargers at six, you've had three quarterbacks go off the board. What if they are just starving for a quarterback and they go Jordan Love there? I mean, no. a, a yeah. few of us during this draft said, man, right at six or seven is where things change for me. Well, boom, if another quarterback goes and four quarterbacks in the top six picks, that just pushes another offensive tackle down, uh, which would have done it for the Broncos. Tristan Wirfs just one spot away from them. But I know we talked about this last time, and I, I just want to bring it up again. I really, really do think it's imperative for the Broncos to try to get up in this draft. I mean, you look here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six picks in a row in front of them here are wide receiver or offensive tackle, and all of those are are realistic picks all those teams need those positions so if you're the broncos you've got to be looking at those six teams in front of you saying man we just uh, we really only have to jump two of these or three of these to make sure that we have some sort of selection available so you know that's 13 with the 49ers even if you just jump up to there you just feel more comfortable saying okay well we know there's not going to be six receivers and tackles that go in front of us there yeah right. Yeah, and the other thing is, you know, we, we're we really splitting hairs on these offensive tackles. Becton could have easily gone at 9 instead of Wills. Uh, Wirfs could have gone at 10 instead of Andrew Thomas. And instead of Wirfs at 14, that's Thomas, and you're looking at Wills, maybe. Which, again, doesn't get me super excited, but we're splitting hairs. Like, if you, you can play the board and let the guy that falls to you fall and say, hey, between the top three receivers and top four tackles, we were happy with whoever we got or you move up and try to guarantee your guy. And that's why moving up to eight is really intriguing because that really allows you to guarantee the, the pick of whoever you want of the best non quarterback offensive player, essentially. Yeah. And I think that should be, that should be item one on the list. Can we get to eight? If you can get to eight, do it, send what you got to send and make sure that you get your pick. Now it's just too bad that, Shelby Harris has those damn long arms. <laughs> because that's really hurting right now. And those long arms don't pay a lot in free agency, we're finding out. Yes, and it's funny because someone brought this up today. It was just one year ago that the Raiders beat the Broncos in that last game and cost themselves Nick Bosa, and they ended up with Cleveland Farrell. So Ooh. I guess it was a it was a trade. Now uh now we might be looking back unless the Broncos trade up saying, oh, well, they returned to the favor and now the Raiders have rugs and the Broncos have to win. Just not Cleveland Farrell, please. <laughs> yes. <Therefore. laughs> Definitely not. All right. Well, thank you to uh, MSU Denver, MSU Denver online for sponsoring this segment. We really appreciate them. No better time than now to go to MSU online, uh, MSU Denver.edu slash online and get yourself uh, a nice education from the good folks that over 
at MSC Denver. You got all that time on your hands. Why not get yourself a degree while you're at it? But that's going to wrap it up for episode two of the DNVR draft. We'll catch you guys later.